Good morning to all Americans and good evening to people from European. Before I start with my talk and show you um, our recent results and what we are doing in our lab with the DIPMAS and SMARTS, um, I want to take the possibility um, to say that from January, um, Obiscope and Cube Biotech team up. So that means um, we um, are working very close together, our partners now. And um, so we are um, launched already um, for SMOVs and about the SMOVs and how we tested it is um, I want to talk later. Okay. As our, um, we are already sell, or have in our portfolio DIPMAS and um, we offer the DIPMAS as a powder, already pH stabilized. And this is the same thing how we offer the smart product. And um, on the second page, um, I only want to say that we have a video about how to use smarts. And if somebody is interested in, he can look at this, at such a video. And it, keep it simple how to use smarts in the laboratory for your research. Okay. Um, this is a short overview about things I want to talk about now. So I want to show you SBR data from the ACA2 receptor with COF spike protein. Um, these cough spike protein um, is um, solubilized with um, Dipmasma and LMNG. This is stabilized. And then I will show you these data. They're very interesting and how these work and, and, and how these behave. The second part of my talk is solubilization data on existing SMARTS portfolio. So we have already four SMARTS and I will show you with different kinds of membrane proteins, how you can solubilize and visualize such a membrane proteins. The third part, I will um, show you solubilization data of new SMARTS as our um, SPR close together and a team with Obiscope. Obiscope wants to launch or don't have new five SMARTS in the pipeline. I will characterize them and show you how um, solubilization data looks with these new SMARTS. And at the end, um, I want to take a, the possibility to look how, what we are doing to establishing methods where we see problems which working with such synthetic polymers at all. Okay, good. So as I mentioned, um, we have made a setup. So we solubilized uh, COVID spike protein, the wild type. We already have um, the mutant in-house. That means the English, South Africa and the um, Brazil mutant. But um, here I want to show you data on the wild type. So we solubilized the wild type cough spike with smart stigma and LMNG. And uh, we fix um, ACA2 um, on the nickel NTA chip, which you can see here as a, as a uh, only to visualize. And then we, we look how um, the different solubilized spike proteins goes over or which KD and how's the relationship between. Okay, here you see direct results. So in the right corner, you see that it's, um, you can really wonderful solubilize cough spike protein with DIPMA. And, um, and this was really important for us to show the people that you can use these polymers. And I come later to, to SMA, SMA and DIPMA to develop assays. You can really develop assays with that. It's no problem. We get a KD of 3.79, 10 minus 9, which is a really very high KD for the COVID spike protein. And it's a little bit better than in literature. And the second type we use SMARPS. Again, you can see it's really very pure. So in our, this is purified with an antibody purification system. Um, I have to say to all, to when you are purifying with um, a row, also with antibody purification, you, when you solubilize with two and a half percent or you in such a range, you to get such wonderful band and to get a lot of protein, you have to expand the volume. So that means when you use two and a half percent and you, pur you directly put your resin to it, you really lose a lot of protein, which you cannot purify because the concentration of the SMARTs or dip mass are too high and in somehow disturbs the purification. This is something which we get further. So we will test all SMARTs, which we have in-house and all dip mass, and to look of maybe when we are changing the character of such a SMARTs and dip mass, how this behaves then. Yeah. Okay. The um, KD 
from the uh, SMALT stabilized uh, COVID protein is 1.16, 10 minus 8. It's a little bit deeper, um, but only a little bit. And when you are looking at the LMNG, it's exactly, you can purify it to the same purity as the BOST before, but this everybody would expect, I think, yeah, because detergent are already established since about 20, 30 years, and this works really fine. But think about that in all steps, you have to put LMNG after that, yes? And one time you have it stabilized in SMILPS or DIPMAS, you can really work with it without anything put in the buffer. This is really an advantage, I think. And uh, you get a KD from 2.83 to 10 minus nine. Yeah. And as I mentioned, we are now measuring all mutants, and this is very, very interesting, but I cannot say now because we are thinking about to publish that, but maybe in the next meeting we can present you the data, how um, these COVID mutations, um, um, if, if they bind um, tighter or not, this will come in the next meeting. Yeah, so this works really fine. Um, and, and, you, and the result for us is, is that you can use that in assays. This, uh, I cannot, I don't show you data, but we have done all this with um, ELISAs. Yeah, with normally ELISA plates, which wasn't possible before. And we get really nice results. And there we get better results with SMILPS and DIPMAS as with the detergent, because as everybody know, it's really hard to do an ELISA with detergent. This is not so easy, yeah, because um, the protein has to be in a good shape. And this you avoid when you are looking, when you are using SMILPS and DIPMAS. Okay, the next we are um, the next point that we are looking for different classes of proteins. I think this is very important to show the people that um, you that they can work with different class of protein and which problems and and how how this looks like. At first of all, as I mentioned, we have done that with the Cov2 spike protein. This is a single span transmembrane, but it's a trimer, so very big extracellular. Um, part of the protein. Only a small part of the protein is, um, is, is, is in the matrix, yeah? But still then, even there, SMALS and DIPMAS was very good to solubilize. We have chosen three GPCRs. We have GLP-1, we have OPRM, so opiate receptor, we have TGF-5. All these are three GPRs in a range of 30 to 50 kilodalton, which we are visualized and um, tested against the SMILPS and DIPMAS in our portfolio. And then we have the acetylene, acetylene nicotine receptor, which is a very, very interesting molecule because it, um, it has four parts which are not covalently bind together. And only if you purify them, if you find the right strategy, you can purify the whole complex. Okay, we are using um, SMALP 1100E, SMALP 25010. SMILP 3010S and SMILP 45S to solubilize this protein. And here you have the result. And directly you see maybe where the problems are if you're working with that. Or not problems, but things you have to, things you have to, to keep in mind. You see here the cov sprite protein. We know that very well that it, you can solubilize with, um, with 13S. It's really better than everything we can, everything, even detergent is not so high. So you get a really high amount of protein. <clears throat> yeah, but you see, sometimes you have a little bit, um, yeah, it's, it's um, okay, it's, it's, so it's in the whole solubilization procedure, we are solubilizing overnight at four degrees, and yeah, there are really parts of the, pro of the protein. Um, then we solubilize GLP-1, and um, this looks really wonderful. In this case, DIPMA-10 is the best point to solubilize, but when you look here in the front, this is the, 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 exactly the turning in the SDS gel. So it's from the, from the one part of the gel to the other. And you see really a lot of protein are sticking in the, in the, um, in the down part of the gel. And we are really working on it to get rid of this. Yeah? That the protein not sticking here, that it goes here. We don't think that this is an aggregation. We think this is something we have to, has something to do with the really high percentage of the, of the polymers. Um, extremely, you can see it in the OPRM receptor. Yeah? You have solubilized really a lot. You cannot solubilize so much um, with detergent. It's not possible with this such a GPCR, but still it's here. But, and um, the, best, the best results gives TGF5. 
Yeah, TGL5, nothing here in the in the top of the gel, so nothing in the pockets, but everything is here. So this is what we want to see. And in this case, Smartster 310S is the best uh, you can use. So, and, and and these are pictures which are not new in our lab, but which definitely show us where we have to work. So we are working on the, that you can really put the sample directly in the SDS gel, that you get nice gels, not smeary, something like that. We don't prefer things where you precipitate the sample. This takes everything a long time. This is possible, I know. There are protocols, but it takes time. Um, the next slide shows SMARTS, the new SMARTS from Orbisco, which they developed and which we now glad to test it. Yeah? Here we have SMART 1100. You see all these characters. Yeah? There are um, SMARTS, which we less hydrophilic. Um, it's between two or which we are already have. Um, some of them are, have a higher divalent cation tolerance compared to the old SMA or old SMA, which are already selling. Yeah, and um, I gave you the, the results. And at first we try the acetylcholine receptor, these parts, which really is, it's, it's a four part membrane protein, not covalently bound. We look at the solubilization pH. So how the SMA looks in the pH, how it, how it, it, it makes the pH, it, it, manipulates the pH, we're looking at the um, 100,000. Um, so is it is it a total solubilizer, as you can see here, no pellet at all. And this all brings, um, gives you an idea what you can do with the SMARTS, not only to solubilize, how you can work with that. But you can see here, this is um, acetylcholine in Triton, it's already made in Triton. I cannot believe, but it's so. And when you look here in the solubilization part, it's really looking great, yeah? But when you're looking at the purification part, here's the purification with Triton, then you see that you are not able to purify in the moment, yeah, the whole protein. And we have an active resin, so this is not possible. But I think if we reduce the, the SMARTS and the DIPMAS, if we get a chance to reduce it directly and not to dissolve it and make one liter of it, then it would work, so definitely. The so next slide shows um, these new polymers, uh, which are made from Orbiscope in, um, with the different proteins I showed you before. And you see that you have better results. You literally see it's, this is it looking, but you have really solubilized a lot of the COP spike protein. Yeah? You see that you now can see the TGF5 better in four or five, from five uh, SMARTs new, four work really well. So all these things, Orbiscope changed seems to be working in somehow and of, of the different proteins. The same thing is we getting um, with the COVID spike. No, these, no, these are, we, we are doing this only with TGL5 and COVID. Okay, so the new SMARTs are, thing, are really behave a little bit better and that is what I want to show to you. And I think nearby we can bring that to the, with Orbiscope to the market. Okay, then next, Point is I want to show you how uh, SMARTS and DIPMA influence the purification. I think some of you already tried it and seen that, that, that there is something, yeah? And we only, only go in short. You see these as 488. So this is, you can detect GFP with this wavelength. And you see the flow through. Here you have, in two and a half percent, you have these SMARTS. When you, this is your setup. When you decrease the SMARTS, yeah? There is no flow through at all. You have two and a half percent in your solubilization and you don't expand, then you will lose over 30% of your sample. So you have to work on it, look at it. Don't miss protein which you cannot purify. Think about new, 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 new um, strategies. Yeah? Expand the volume, really decrease the um, SMARTS and dif DIFMAR concentrations when you are working with IMAC or antibody purification. This really helps to get your sample and not to lose material. Yeah? We're looking at the dilution and on the opposite, you can see when you are having, when the concentration goes up with the SMALTS, the dilution goes down. And in this case, we put so much GFP on it because we want to see the effect. When you have only 0 0.5 milligram in 10 or 20 milliliter concentration, you will lose everything. And this is what we saw. Yeah. And we are, as I mentioned, we are working on these problems. I'm pretty sure that we come up in the next two, three months with protocols for the community. Okay. And my last picture, um, 
I want to show what, what I think in the future what is possible. I think the cube has the largest portfolio which, uh, which is stabilization technique. And you don't, I think in the future, you don't have to look at SMALPS alone or DIPMAS alone. Look at the whole thing. You can really took SMALPS or DIPMA to solubilize, yeah? And then maybe you change the pH. You are losing, you are losing the SMALPS, can do crystallization. Yeah, in your crystallization trials. Maybe you get you can you switch from smart to nano disk. Maybe you use an opposite. Maybe you switch again to detergents. I think this is how we look, how we think this will be working in the future, and how we look like on the problems. And we try we think that with these methods we can solve the problems of our customers. Thank you very much for your attention.